What's up? So um, this tutorial is going to be on how to de deploy a um, PHP app with CodeIgniter using uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, so this uh, this uh, tutorial assumes that you know you have some knowledge about PHP, CodeIgniter, and um, SQL Workbench. So I, I was going to make a video with a brand new app, but the one bad thing about Azure, not bad, but like everything else, they'll only give you so much database space. So after that, you know, you're going to have to pay. But um, yeah, so I'm going to do it on the app that I finally deployed. It took a long, long time, probably three or four days. Um, you know, maybe I'm just slow at it. I don't know. But um, I guess... You know, there, are, there isn't a lot of documentation out there in terms of coding Niner and working with Azure. It really shouldn't be that difficult. And I think um, all the stuff I've deployed so far using Heroku or Python anywhere and now Azure, it definitely gets easier after you do it. So I wanted to make this, though, because I couldn't find any tutorials specifically for this. I could find stuff on Azure, but hooking up the database, that was pretty hard to find. So... Um, this is what we're going to work towards. This is what I have deployed. You'll notice it's the Azure websites.net, right? And, you know, you can see my database is hooked up because if I go in, you know, we can see the whole app and let's just sign out. But yeah, this is hosted through Azure websites, which is Microsoft. And uh, so, yeah, let's get started. Let me just talk about um, the key things you need to, need to do. You need to create a web app first. So you go in here, click new web app quick create you give it a name then you create it right whatever you want you know as long as it's available after you do that you go into SQL databases you click new okay you do quick create you give it your database name you choose a server if you don't already have a server it will create one for you uh, so you can just click new SQL database server after you do that um, you need to set up some storage so you would just click new and um, storage quick create and you know give it whatever you want whatever name you want um, that's just to house the database information and um, after that after you have that all hooked up you want to go into your web app you want to click linked resources you want to click um, I already have mine hooked up but you want to click new and um, you want to click let me see, new linked resources, new, create, no, sorry, um, I would have to do it off a new app, but basically, if you already have one, it's not going to pop up, but you would click link a resource, create a new resource, my SQL database, give it a name, and the region you're in, and agree to it, right, after that, I, I've reached my quota, so I can't do more, because I'm not paying for it, after you do that, that'll hook up, um, your database with your web app, um, at least on Azure. So after you have all of that done, uh, I think it's important to sort of look at when we click on database, I think this is pretty important right here. This connection string is going to make sure everything's firing. So when you click on it and you look at PHP, this tells you your server, you know, that's the Azure, um, sorry, the server, the database that you're going to put in for the database.php, uh, your username, your actual database name um, and uh, how it's going to connect. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that. So you want to go into your workbench and go in here. I already have the connection, so I'll just show it to you guys. So edit connection, my connection name. You can call it whatever you want. This host name, right? Azure West Cloud App .net. That's that's coming from this. I'll show you. That is coming from, um, where's that? Sorry. That is, if we go into our web app, click PHP discussion board. If we go here, we scroll all the way down and configure. If we look at show connection strings, this gives us our database, our data source. It's your data source, which you're going to plug in. That's how it's going to know to link up with Azure. That's the host name. Port, you can give whatever you want, doesn't matter. Um, username, that's the user ID in this connection string. So I'll just show you guys that. I'm not going to show the password, but that's the user ID. And if you if you scroll over a little bit more, you can see password. And um, 
you can put plug that in. You can store that in your keychain, and you don't you don't need to give it a default schema. And then when you test it, it should say connected to with user connection parameters are correct. You don't need to worry about the about the SSL not being enabled. Okay, so after you do that, you wanna you wanna go into it obviously and hook up your database. I imported my schema, my discussion board, and click on it. And if we do session on it, we can actually see the host, you know, who's connected, the current user, etc. Um, so that's the biggest thing right there, getting that hooked up. Once you have that working, and it says it gives you that little. Um, it gives you, um, you know, connection parameters correct. Don't mess with that anymore. That's good. So the next biggest thing is getting um, wrong one. Getting um, your your files correct in here. There's a few things you need to change. First, go into your auto load config, and let me see. I think I have the wrong one. Sorry about that. Okay, so first go into your application config and normally this index page, you're probably going to have something like index. This just gets rid of when you when you see in the URL the index.php, that, that gets rid of that right there. The next biggest thing is this enable query strings. So what would happen to me is I would get something like, um, let me do this, so if I send a request. I would I would get something like this, right? Like I would get something like that question mark. It works now, but before when I had enable query strings on and when I had it turned to true, it would no matter what post request I sent, it would always direct me back to this root page, the index. So by turning I'm not sure exactly what it does, but but by turning enable query strings to false, you sort of get rid of that and it, it looks a lot cleaner like all of your, sorry about that, all of your um, uh, URLs, you know, they don't have any of that index. They all just look really, really clean. You know, you log in, you don't have any of the index PHP, any of the question marks, none of that stuff. Sign back out. Um, so, yeah, that's that. So, you need to do that. And um, let's see. Next thing is. You don't need to mess with any of that. So just the enable query strings, turn that to false. Um, index page. Um, you can, you might have this as auto. I don't think it really matters. I was ma matters. I was messing with um, with the web config file and the HT access, and that and that seems to uh, affect that. I guess if you have it with auto. But uh, here's the web .config. Right, Here, these are just rules basically. I don't know too much about it either because I, um, you know, only looked into it a little bit. But basically, I don't, I don't think you actually need this anymore. I was trying to write in this web.config file um, when they, you know, when these special characters come up in the URL, you know, rewrite and take them out. But uh, as soon as I found in the config that enable query strings. That seems like that did everything for it without needing the web.config. But I think there's, you know, there's definitely certain rules with the XML that you can rewrite, you know, your routing based on that. Okay, so now the most important part is in this database.php. Um, yeah, I get it, right? This this should be my local host stuff, but you know, it doesn't matter. I was just messing around with it. If your environment is production, this is the stuff you want to mess with. This right here, your Azure Cloud app dot net, whatever, whatever yours is, that is coming from. If we go back to database, click on your database. That's that, and that's the port. You don't need to put the port in. So that's that. Um, your username is that. Your password is that. Um, right host name, username. Uh, and the last big thing is your driver. It seems like at first I was only having success with with uh, my driver being SQL serve, but uh, MS, MySQLite or MySQLite doesn't really, it didn't work for me. The only one I could get to work was uh, MySQL, but I've heard a lot of times Azure, uh, 
prefers the SQL serve. But yeah, so those are the biggest things. Um, you know, you need to have the right uh, username, the right password. And again, all of that stuff is coming from your connection string in your web app when you click on configure that tab. And once you get that working, um, should be good. The only other thing is this HT access file, which um, HT access is the equivalent of the web.config for Azure. This is what Azure processes, and this is this HT access is what um, what Coding Nighter reads. And again, I'm I, I looking back at it. I think just with this config enable query string set to false, you should be good. And if you take out um, this config index page equals index, you know, and base URL, if you leave those to empty strings you should be good and you should have clean URLs. I don't really know what the disadvantages of those are, but um, you know, I was I was really just going for functionality at this point and trying to get it up and running. But the biggest things are, you know, just looking back at what I said for the database and trying to configure that in such a way that, you know, your your workbench is communicating with Azure and you can, you know, eventually get your app up and running but the biggest thing is using the connection strings and using the right username and password and then setting the enable query strings um, to false and getting rid of that index you know unless you want that ugly um, ugly suffix on your URLs but uh, yeah that's it guys um, thanks for watching and I hope you know this can help you out if you have any questions let me know um, I you know I still don't know the ins and outs of it but I definitely investigated a lot of it to try and get it to work. Now that I have it, um, it, it it's pretty cool. It's a lot different than Heroku and the and the fact that you're actually you're kind of like the host, you know, through your workbench, you're hosting the database, um, and it's just talking with Azure back and forth. But um, yeah, thanks for watching, and um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.